Lions hosted the Pearl Pirates. Let's start with Pearl running back Jaden Thompson. He'll run for 15 yards before getting tackled out of bounds, kicking off that drive. And then on the next play, Thompson able to score a 10 yard touchdown to put the Patriots on the scoreboard six to nothing. And then it was Titans running back Ron Travius Sherrill pushing through that Pearl defense to extend the drive and give his team a chance to score. And they would. Javarius Luckett gets the handoff, takes this one up the seam for five yards for the score to tie this one at six. But in the end, Ridgeland would fall to Pearl 22 to 12. And Warren Central coming off a big win last week. Can they do it again facing Brandon tonight? It was a standing room only crowd tonight in Brandon. The Bulldogs hosting Warren Central and everyone came out. The Dogs jumped out to a 20 to 12 lead quick, but the Vikings stormed back. It's quarterback Aiden Greer calling his own number and taking it in for the three yard touchdown run. Mm -hmm. Warren Central will go for two and if Number it ain't broke, Greer. don't <laughs> fix it. Greer takes the snap again one more time. The same play cutting the lead down 20 to 18. So then two minutes left in the game before, or before the half. The Bulldogs trying to respond. It's QB Shade and Shaq drives the team downfield, collecting, connecting with Eli Mori along the sideline for a nice game. But then eight seconds left. A prayer is not answered. That one, Shaq going for the end zone. He's picked off, and that'll do it. Brandon squeaks by in this one, 29 to 28. To the Callaway Chargers looking to get a win after back to back losses. We're going to see QB Alfonso Fleming. Well, he throws a pass, but this one falls incomplete to number five, Marvin Moore. Now, can QB looking to throw, and it's a touchdown to number eight. Now, after the touchdown, we would eventually see QB Alfonso Fleming. He throws an incomplete pass to number nine, Tyler Smith. Fleming would then throw on the next drive to number three, Christian Woodcox. And you're going to see right here, well, he makes a man miss, but the defense eventually catches up to him. And then finally right here, we're going to see the Tigers kick the extra point. So, hey, Callaway would fall short in this one, 14 to 25. And now we go check on the Clinton Arrows, who are at home again. After last week's big win, the Arrows took on Grenada. Now, QB, number four right here, Clinton, he hands the ball off to number six. We're going to wait for it. All right, there we go. He hands the ball off to number six, and this one is good. And then Braden Trusty White, well, he throws another touchdown to McCaleb Taylor. And then the, we see the arrows just coasting in this one. All right, we go over to Grenada. That will be Brandon Trusty again. He's throwing a touchdown. But right here, Braden Trusty gets another touchdown to McCaleb Taylor. And then the kicker would eventually make the field goal and score one point. All right, we got more football on the way. We'll see what the MAIS teams have in store for us. More in the Blitz coming up next.
And welcome back to the Blitz. Still plenty of games left for us to cover, Carlos. Absolutely, Marissa. Let's check out some of the action from the private schools in the MAIS. All right, now we go over to Park Lane, and guess what? They haven't defeated Jackson Prep since 1995, a span of 30 years. Both teams enter the game with impressive records, but Parker Puckett connected with wide receiver Gardner Young for a spectacular 47-yard touchdown pass. And then, well, hey, we will go over to Prep, and they get the 7-0 lead, but Park Lane in the first quarter on their second drive, that's quarterback Parker Puckett again. He's decided to take matters into his own hands after faking a handoff while well, he sprinted 43 yards for a rushing touchdown, extending the lead to 14-0. Park Lane finally got on the scoreboard when Braxton Hughes threw a massive 75-yard touchdown pass to Cruz Marchbanks, cutting the lead to eight points. Although they missed the sec the extra point with this victory, Prep now improves to 5-0 on the season, while Park Lane falls to 4-2 as Prep wins 48 to 12. All right, St. Alo Aloysius traveled to Clay and Christian to clash with the Warriors. It's the Flashes versus CCA. We're going to pick this one up in the third quarter. The Warriors up six to nothing, but that one won't last long. It's Flashes quarterback Carson Smith. Flash steps into the end zone, giving his team the lead. So St. Aloysius, after that score, they go up seven to six. But the Flashes would not stop there they want to keep going they want to run up the score in the same quarter they hand it off to the running back and that's not wally west not barry allen not the flash over 80 yards for pearson smith but unfortunately he ran out of gas he didn't have enough juice tackled inside the 20 just as the third quarter expires so then in the fourth quarter somewhere in that pile is a saint aloysius touchdown they go on to win it the final score flashes 19 the warriors six Let's head out to Flora, Mississippi, where the 3-1 Winston Academy is taking on the unbeaten Tri-County Academies. And the Rebels started off strong. First possession, running back Cooper Johnson not looking back as he takes this one 64 yards to the house. Rebelling against the defense strategy, Tri-County will go up 7-0. But hey, Rebels' next possession, quarterback Bryce Warner gets picked off by the Patriots quarterback Holder Todd Wall is stopped at one. The next play, the drive is finished off by running back Bill Boitner. We're tied at seven, but Tri-County has that rebellious streak. QB Warner finds his receiver right here. That is Jason McMillan for the smooth catch in the end zone. 14-7, Tri-County leads it, and they will end up winning it 47 to 13. And why don't you say we go ahead and take a look at some final scores from tonight, right, Carlos? Absolutely, Marissa. McAdams, the Bulldogs, and St. Andrews Knights. The Knights getting it done 50 to 6. All right, now we go over to the Lamar Raiders against the Jackson Academy Raiders. Well, we just missed that score, but we can. Okay, we're going back. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all a lot. Listen, the Raiders came away with the win. 24 to 13 was the final. Good win for J.A. All right, moving on now. Velma Jackson and Jim Hill. This was a Thursday night game. The Falcons getting it done 22 to 14. All right, and Crystal Springs Tigers. They suited up against the Elite County Trojans. And you see they came out with the win. And then we go over to French Camp Panthers and the Pisca Dragons. 39 to 6 was the final for that one. And Germantown avenging their loss last week. 47 to 13 West Lauderdale Knights on the wrong end of that game. All right, well, hey, up next, we step away from the football field to highlight this week's Blitz 16 Player of the Week winner. Stay with us. More of the Blitz on the way. You're watching Blitz on 16 WNDT. Woo!
Welcome back to the Blitz. It is now time to highlight our Blitz 16 player of the week. This week's winner is junior wide receiver Jaden Hollins out of Clinton High School. Now last week, Hollins finished with five receptions for 178 yards. His mom told us to get his stats right, y'all. So he had two touchdowns and one passing touchdowns. Now we caught up with Hollins earlier today after he accepted the award. Just talk about, you know, what this award means to you. This award means a lot to me. I'm thankful, most importantly, for the Arrow Nation, my coaches, and everybody that gave me the opportunity to play this game the way I do. This is a very much honor to me. Um, last week, very hard, very good practice, but I just believed that I could always do it. My coaches believed in me, but I always told me to keep grinding, and I just kept that mindset on and off the field. All right, now congratulations to Jaden. Now, we also spoke to first-year head coach John Carr and asked him about his star wide receiver. Coach, just talk about, you know, what type of player Jaden is for your team. Well, he's got, I love his competitive character. He's, he's a great teammate. Uh, he's an encourager. Uh, he's always the first one in the field house, last one to leave. He picks up trash behind guys. He's the ultimate team player and, and uh, very, very deserving of this honor. He's put in a lot of hard work. He's a two-sport athlete. Uh, he does everything we ask, and, and again, he's a, he's a coach's dream. All right, and y'all know the drill. Next week, we need a new winner. Here is how to nominate the next player of the week. In an email, send Carlos and myself the player's name, classification, school, position, and stats from their game. Our emails are right on your screen. Jot them down. You have until Sunday at 4 p.m. to submit your nominees. Now, the nominees will be announced on Sundays during our 5.30 p.m. newscast. The voting window opens on WAPT.com after the nominees are revealed at 5.30 on Sunday. Please remember the voting window window closes Wednesday at noon. And we go back out to the football field for more highlights, more of the Blitz on the way. Don't touch that remote. All right, welcome back to the Blitz. Let's continue with our action. We continue with Starkville Academy on the road against Hartfield Academy. Yeah, Carlos, we go to the second quarter. Starkville's quarterback, Luke McKenzie, launched a stunning 90-yard touchdown pass to Blake Little, who dove into the end zone. You see him still on his feet, and then he just goes all the way home, bringing this score 21-7 in favor of Hartfield Academy. But on the very next possession, Hartfield quickly responded with an 80-yard kickoff return by Kenzie West, who then weaved past defenders, extending Hartfield's lead to 28 
to seven, and the ref couldn't even catch up to him. All right. Now we go to two plays later. We're going to see Hartfield would eventually strike again, forcing a crucial safety by London Simmons, pushing their lead to a commanding 30 points. And then we take you back to the Hartfield series as Cayman Tapper does what he does best. That's throwing a screen pass to Braylon Womack who glides through defenders like he's a smooth criminal. There we go. Hartfield takes a commanding lead of 37 to 7. Hartfield he ultimately dominated this game, winning 58 to 7 over Starkville Academy. Time for our Battle of the Raiders. It's Lamar against Jackson Academy. And Lamar opening up the scoring, the QB. Uh, that's a pass from Wyatt Bond to J Sullivan Reed. So LS is up 7 to nothing. And after a 7 to 3 halftime deficit, J.A., the Raiders opening up this second half, just opened a can of worms. 52-yard run from Kingston Mays to take the lead. And then it's Josh Dawkins stepping back in the pocket, and this one's picked off. Taking it up the field, J.A. is going to set themselves with a short field, and they're going to capitalize. It's a quick screen pass to Kingston Mays from Pruitt James, which he took from 37 yards out. So J.A. increases the score 17 to seven. And then Pruitt James, we just called him. We're gonna call him one more time. Putting the icing on the cake in the fourth. This 15 yard run, he's juking defenders left and right. J.A. improves to five and one, while Lamar drops to two and three. Next week, the Raiders are off, then host St. Joseph at the Brickyard. All right, now we go over to the surprising Lanier Bulldogs put their 3-0 record on the line tonight against Crosstown Rivals Forest Hill. You see right there, Patriots are on the move early on Lanier's territory, but Bulldogs linebacker Darrell Roberts lays down the big hit, causing the fumble, and Lanier would eventually recover. So the Bulldogs capitalized when Jeremiah Wilson will get the call, and we're going to see this play again. The quarterback just hands this one off to the running back, but he gets stuffed. Now, listen, three plays later, Wilson would go in for the touchdown early, giving the Bulldogs a 6-0 lead. All right, let's take our next matchup. Mendenhall on the road taking on Florence. We'll pick this one up in the second quarter. Mendenhall's quarterback stepping back and letting this one fly. Put some air under that. The toe tap grab and the touchdown. This one's good. The Eagles taking over at first and goal, and they're just going to punch it in right there. The running back helping them keep that lead. The Eagles winning big this one, 36-6, to the final score there. All right, now we go over to Pilahatchee. Now McGee, right here, the QB, takes a snap, and he slings it downfield to Stringer, the open wide receiver, and the Chiefs get the first points of the half. They would then go for two to cut the deficit to a one-score game, and this one is good. Now the Rangers then take over, and QB Noah Aldrich airs this one out, and he has a man wide open. That's Christian Anderson with the catch. But the, after that, the Rangers would have first and goal. They turned the ball over on a bad snap. Hey, that would come back to haunt them as they would lose this one 25 to 26. And of course, let's go ahead and check out some more final scores from tonight. Let's see who we got up first, Carlos. Okay, say, cut, okay. Tongue twister. Okay, so we got the Panthers who stood up against the Yazoo County Panthers. Okay, Panthers taking on Panthers. Final score was a close one, 50 to 48. And South Pike Eagles dominating in that one, 43 to nothing over the Provine Rams. And let's check out, let's see who's next. Okay, Puckett, they suit up against the Stringer Red Devils, 38 to 17 was the final for that game. And in a blackjack score there, Raleigh taking that one, 21 to 14 over Mize. Hit me, dealer. All right, let's see. So we have St. Patrick, the Fighting Irish. They faced off against the Yazoo City Indians, and Yazoo came out on top, 48 to 7. Alrighty, get ready for the best plays of the night, the high five, the top five plays of the night, coming up next on The Blitz.
All right, we are back. Listen, Carlos, week four almost done. Any matchups that impress you? Any players? Man, I always talk about it every week. Game of the week. Mm -hmm. I just got to say one interesting stat from that game. 500 total yards of offense for, I mean, that was crazy. And it's, it's week crazy, four. Crazy as, game. As, we, as we keep saying, it's week four, so the matchups are only going to get better. But listen, let's go ahead and get to the top high fly, best high five plays of tonight. We start off with number five right here. We see uh, Mendenhall QB Aaron this one out, and the receiver makes adjustments to catch this one for a touchdown. All right, let's head over to number four now. It's Madison Central's Michael Steven splitting the seam up the middle, and he's just going to blow by everyone, seeing nothing but green in front of him for an 80-yard crib call. All right, coming in at number three, we got Tri-County Rebels, Cooper Johnson, turning on the Jets with this 64-yard run against Winston Academy. You might as well kiss him goodbye. All righty, play number two and our first of the game of the week. It's MRA QB Sam Stockett lobbing one deep to Jake McMillan. He's going to stretch out for this one. A fingertip grab, and he doesn't slow down running into the end zone. All right, really, really, really quick. Number one, well, that would be QB Sam Stockett. He lobs one to Case Thomas, and the rest is history. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in to another week of The Blitz.